Hello, my name is Ryan. In today's video, we are going to be talking about charging lithium polymer battery packs for RC vehicles in parallel. So parallel charging. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably already know what the benefit of charging battery packs in parallel is. We're going to quickly cover that. So the biggest benefit of charging battery packs in parallel is being able to charge multiple battery packs at a time. So why would we want to do this? Well, a couple applications in RC, and there are probably many more, for example, radio controlled fast electric boats and radio controlled electric ducted fan jets consume power at a very high rate. They consume power so quickly that they're drawing in excess of 100 amps, and they do this continuously. That means right from when you start the, the plane up or the boat up until they come back in. That's how demanding they are on the power system. And of course, if they're drawing this much power, they're gonna consume it very quickly, all the battery pack power very quickly. We're talking less than five minutes. The only way to combat this is, of course, more battery packs. If we have more battery packs, we need to get them all up fully charge as quickly as we possibly can. This is where parallel charging comes in. We're able to take multiple battery packs, place it on the charger, and get that charging cycle complete at the same time we would be able to take one battery pack and get that one battery pack fully charged. So you can see the difference. It could be a ratio of four to one depending on how many battery packs you have getting four charge versus the one charge. That's a huge benefit. Let's talk about the charger that we need. The reason why this is important is because the charger that you may have may not actually be capable of handling parallel charging. Not all chargers are created equally and not all chargers are capable of parallel charging to the same degree that you would need in order to get that multiple battery pack charged at the same time as a single battery pack. Let's take a look at why. So if we take a quick example, let's look at a 6S battery pack such as this one that I have here at 5,000 milliamp hour. And let's say that we can only charge it at one C. So that means we take the 5,000 milliamp hour and a charge rate of one C is going to give us five amps. Now we look at the cell count again. We know it's a 6S and we multiply that by the peak voltage that this battery can reach when it gets up to its full charge. That is 4.2 volts. 4.2 volts multiplied by our five amps is gonna give us about 126 watts. So 126 watts is the amount of power that our charger needs to have in order to charge the 6S pack and only one of them. Now, if we go ahead and we take uh, multiple packs, let's say four battery packs, we need to take this 126 watts and we have to multiply that by four. That leaves us with about 504 watts. So that 504 watts is exactly what we need to bring four of these up to fully charged. Now the, the way that we actually arrive at that 504 watts is we need to boost our current that we end up sending from the charger out to the battery packs. The, re, the way that we accomplish this is we take that five amp charge rate and we multiply that by four. Each battery pack is gonna be charged at five amps. Five amps times our four battery packs is equivalent to 20 amps. So now we're taking the 25.2 volts, our peak voltage of that battery pack, a 6S pack, and we multiply it by the 20 amps and that's where we get the 504 watts. In addition to the battery packs and the charger, you'll also need to have a specific parallel charging adapter. That allows you to place all the battery packs in parallel, which includes your main power leads as well as your balance taps. All of them have to be on a board, and then from there you're able to plug that into your charger and charge up the battery packs in parallel. Let's take a look at the most important part of this video, the do not do's of parallel charging. Our first do not do is charging battery packs with significantly varying voltages or capacities. And when I refer to the capacity, I'm talking about the capacity of the battery as a percentage of its charge state. I'm not talking about, you know, 5,000 milliamps consumed or a 5,000 pack versus an 800 milliamp hour pack. I wanna know the percentage of the battery that has been depleted or remains. For example, if I discharge 70% of the battery pack, I am now left with 30%. This is gonna to equate to a specific voltage. Now, one of the things that we have to do is make sure that when we place the battery packs in parallel, we don't have significant variance there. My recommendation is to go no more than about 30% 
variance. That 30% variance is going to equate to about 0.1 volt. Now what you want to do to figure that out is take your most charged battery pack or least discharged battery pack and you want to take the most discharged battery pack. You want to take those two and figure out what the range is. If they come out to be less than 0.1 volts when you measure them on one of those devices, then you can go ahead and parallel charge. You do not want to go outside of that range. You can get into all sorts of trouble if you're going outside that range. Let's look at our second do not do. You want to make sure that you don't charge LiPo battery packs that have different cell counts. For example, this is a 6S pack. I don't want to go ahead and place this 6S pack in parallel with a 4 or 5. It doesn't matter. You don't want to vary them at all. You will get into immediate trouble if you go ahead and do that. This is probably the one of the most important do not do's that you have with parallel charging. Whatever you're charging, you have to have the same cell count. Always do not charge a 4S with a 6S in parallel. That is going to lead to absolute disaster very quickly. Let's look at our third do not do. Our third do not do is do not force the balance lead. So this is going to be the balance lead that goes back to the charger. And of course on the battery pack, this is specifically what we're actually referring to. Do not force this lead to take all of the charging current. The reason why we want to avoid this is because this lead has only been designed to take upwards of not much more than about an amp of power any more than that and you'll heat up these wires possibly burn them away and of course that can lead to fires and all sorts of other different trouble there what you'll want to do is make sure that you end up plugging in your main battery leads first when you plug in your main battery leads first you will avoid any power going from your harness first the second thing that you want to do is avoid forgetting to plug in your main battery leads. If you forget to plug these in, that is a certain way that only this gets plugged in and it's going to force the charge to go through here. At the end of the day, just make sure that all of your power is going through here and the balance lead harness is only responsible for balancing the specific cells in your pack. Let's take a look at the fourth do not do. The fourth do not do, this one may not be so much related to the safety of yourself or others around you, but it might be more related towards the safety of the battery pack. This is going to be related to the resistance data. Now only specific chargers will be able to provide you with resistance data. That resistance data is going to be in terms of milliohms. So let's assume that a battery pack such as this one has a total resistance of 10 milliohms. This is gonna be based off of the individual resistance and of course the, all of the individual cells get summed up. The individual resistances of each cell sum up for a total that represents the battery pack. Now when we're talking about this resistance value, if you are placing battery packs in parallel and they're at 10 ohms, for every time you end up placing a battery pack in parallel, you're actually reducing the total amount of res resistance that is seen in that circuit. And that circuit is gonna go back to the, the battery charger. The battery charger is only able to see one resistance, the one that it's charging. When you have multiple battery packs in parallel, that resistance is actually lower. So if we take one six cell battery pack with a 10 milli ohm resistance and we place that in parallel with another battery pack that has 10 ohms where that charger is going to see five milli ohms make sure you don't end up using that data to determine the life of your radio control lithium battery pack let's take a look at our last do not do's of charging in parallel this one may not seem all that critical at first, but it actually is quite important. What you want to make sure you do is not charge immediately after you finish plugging in all the battery packs. Now the reason why, we, if you remember back to the first thing that we talked about, it was all about making sure that we have a specific range and we don't exceed that range of charge levels within our battery packs that we want to charge in parallel. Now we're talking about once we have them all connected to make sure that we don't immediately start the charge. And the reason why we don't want to start the charge immediately is so that all the battery packs can balance out with each other. 
they'll do that on their own as they're plugged in in parallel. That's one of the prime reasons why you want power to go through your main charging leads on the battery pack rather than charging through the balance tap. Make sure you plug these power leads in first, then you plug in your balance harness. As you plug in your main leads, they're gonna begin to balance between all the rest of the battery packs that you have there. The general rule of thumb to follow when you're talking about the time that you should wait after you finish plugging in the battery packs is roughly about five minutes per 10% difference in your discharge level. So if you have a 10% difference between one battery pack, let's say one was charged at 70% or discharged down to 70% and the other one was discharged down to about 60%, that is a 10% difference from your maximum to your minimum. In that case, you'll wanna wait about five minutes before you initiate that charge. Within that five minutes, your battery pack is going to end up balancing with all the other batteries that are connected. And then once that is complete, after the time has elapsed, then you may initiate your, your charging sequence. In parallel charging, there's not opportunity to have a lot of control. Everything is about balance within all of the battery packs. If you actually were to take two battery packs and charge them in series, that's where you have a lot of control. Within series charging, you're able to take multiple battery packs and you have a, a harness that is able to take the balance taps and then split that among the three or two battery packs that you have and you have independent cell control where you can manipulate the percentage of the cells based off of your charger. That just about covers it for charging radio control lithium battery packs in parallel. Now if you're looking for more videos similar to what you've seen here and you like it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.